The mole mob, what spread fear in our small town was probably the best joke in those thousand years that this small town had existed. It began with an article in the local newspaper in which a man by name Rupert Albert Timmer demanded an immediate closing of the popular dance hall in town. Nobody would care a shit if this Rupert had been an average Mr. Unknown, but the actual Rupert happened to be the leader of the second important political party in the town council. Rupert was a teetotaler and an important member of the local cultural society, what gave him, and his stupid suggestions, some support, even from some members of the other parties. A real pain in the ass for us partying youngsters. One of the few positive matters with that Rupert was his very beautiful daughter Madeline, who was in my class at the school. Unfortunately, all my attempts of getting a date were turned down by her with nasty comments about partying drinkers. My name is Robert Johnson, and when the beginning of this story happened, I and a gang of seven of my childhood friends had just begun our last year class studies at the gymnasium, comparable to upper high school in U.S. We were lucky enough to have a club room in the basement of a building where the father of one of us guys worked as janitor. The club room was a perfect place for us to gather for some drinks of cheap booze supplied by a false ID before going out for dancing at Saturday evenings. After a couple of drinks this Saturday evening, we decided that this damn Rupert or the RAT, as he was called behind his back, ought to be punished. After several wild suggestions, we agreed about a simple action. Rupert was an amateur gardener, proud and famous for his king-size pears. Therefore we wrote, and sent him a letter what read, Dear Friend Rupert, It is brought to my attention that the infamous law-breaking mole mob has sold all your delicious pears to an illegal winemaker. Please let all the pears be where they are. Otherwise the mole mob will punish you severely for stealing their property. Sincerely, your faithful supporter and friend. As a law-abiding citizen, Rupert went direct to the police and demanded protection. If you're enjoying my content, consider joining my Patreon community. By becoming a patron, you'll get access to full parts of my videos much earlier than everyone else. Plus, you'll be supporting me to create even more awesome content for you. Check out the link in the description to join now. What was refused of several practical reasons and caused a loud arguing from Rupert. In that very moment, a journalist from the local paper happened to come in and got his story of the year. The next day, the front page of the local newspaper had a picture of an angry Rupert with the text, Rat Fight in Our Town. The well-known politician Rupert A. Timmer, best known as the RAT, has been attacked by a mob of criminal moles. The mole mob claims to somehow be in the possession of the rat's prize-winning pears and says to sell them to a winemaker. The police will be doing their best, but doesn't have officers enough for a 24-7 protecting of Mr. Timmer's garden. To most people, it was a silly news story, hardly to be taken as serious. Rupert was said to have raised a real hell at the newspaper's office, invested big money in alarm systems, and spent many sleepless nights watching his pairs. But that rat story got in very unexpected but interesting side effect. Local opinion began to have the mysterious mole mob as scapegoats for all unsolved crime in our town. We innocent guys got good laughs every time those, usually heavy magnified, Stories about mole mobs' criminal actions came to our knowledge. About two months after that now famous newspaper article about Rupert's pears, shit hit the fan again. Our local police got a new chief, a genuine friend of law and order, who promised and swore an oath to be the man who got the whole mole mob behind bars. Most of the members of our gang had got more or less serious relations with girls, which is why our meetings for drinking at the club before going out at Saturday evenings had almost turned to history. However, one evening we had a meeting for planning a big party and the new police chief's behavior got many nasty comments and at last all of us agreed that it was our duty to make some fun of that silly man. The meeting ended with an agreement and oaths that our mole mob would remain in the future as a secret brotherhood for assistance if any of us got problems and needed help. We even had fixed all details about how to manage our big party and even a plan for making a laughing stock of that police chief. Our plan worked much better than expected. Rupert the Rat was promised inside information about secret bribes to some politicians and the secret evidence would be given to him in a dark section of the main town park. By a coincidence, the police chief was informed about finding the mole mob leader at the same place. They met and poor Rupert was hit to the ground and handcuffed when he tried to escape from what he regarded as an attempt from the mole mob to mug him. However, 
That turned to the worst scandal in our town what caused the police chief find a new job far away in the north and Rupert got enough of public opinions and left politics. Six years later. Time goes fast and many people in our town got a real surprise when I Robert Johnson married Rupert Timmer's pretty daughter Madeline. Of course, it was very obvious for me that Madeline's parents regarded me to be far from a dream spouse for their daughter, though I was working as engineer for the Municipal Central Heating Company, but they had to choose of two bad things, either to accept me as an in-law or rather to prefer that their pretty girl would be an unmarried mother. The courting of Madeline, a friend of mine, Dan Peterson and his best pal Niklas had been out early and succeed to book two rooms for two weeks at a small cheap hotel at one of our most popular summer resorts. Known for the wild partying famous people used to have there during the summer vacation season in July. No wonder that they would find two handsome girls for that trip. But Niklas got a promotion and had to be elsewhere the whole July for work reasons. So Dan asked me to take Niklas' place and I immediately said yes and cancelled my other plans for that time because the girl intended to be his company for Niklas was Madeline Timmer, Rupert Timmer's snooty daughter who had recently terminated her long-time engagement with a spoiled boyfriend from a noble family due to his cheating. My expectations for getting anywhere with Madeline were as limited as they had been earlier in the school, but why care about that because she wasn't the only fish in that sea where we were going. No reason for me to care about any chances, or no chances at all with her when there were a large number of other pretty girls at that summer resort. Our arrival to the hotel caused the first mess when Madeline demanded herself and the other girl sharing one room with Dan and me and the other. But the next day Madeline and me got very well together when the four of us kept together both at the beach and the first evening partying at a bar. At our second evening we, and many other couples went to the seaside rocks for watching the sunset during a picnic with the popular mix white wine and shrimps. It was a warm and pleasant evening, and all of us were feeling good. Then the girls suggested a 50-kilometer shopping trip to a big famous factory outlet the next day because the weather forecast said thunder and rain for that day. Dan, whose car we used for our trip, was in a jolly and horny mood and replied, Yes, my ladies, no problem. Not at all if you us off right here and now. Maybe older people would be shocked by this, but such things are much more common with younger people. Madeline began with some objections, but the other girl said, What the hell? Why should that be any big deal? Then she took out Dan C and began. Madeline hesitated for a while. Then even she said, What the hell? Why not? Took out my and began while it took me a long time to believe my eyes. Back at the hotel, Madeline and Dan changed rooms. Then Madeline once again acted in unexpected way by saying, Even I got horny at the rock and now you owe me making love in a real good way after that damn forced us I did for you on the rock. The present day Madeline Timmer was indeed quite different from the snooty B.I. remembered from ignoring me during our school days. Her two longtime ex-boyfriends might brought some common sense to her mind before she dumped them for some reasons. However, she didn't need to ask me twice. Within less than a minute, she was lying on the bed with me. She could hardly say a word direct after that intensive. After a while, she whispered, Oh my God, I could never believe that you can be so heavenly good. Really surprising to hear those words from a girl who'd been involved in two long-lasting relations. From that moment, we were an item and continued dating even after those summer holidays weeks what could been described as a very romantic time. She wasn't on pills why an accident with a broken sea got her pregnant before her infamous father Rupert Timmer had persuaded her to dump me. I didn't run away from what had happened to her and was proud when my friends envied me for having a pretty trophy wife. At least until our first child was old enough for daycare and she began to job again. Then I learned to know the real Madeline. She was still a very beautiful woman but unfortunately even turned to a real nagging bee. I'm sure you may ask. Why in the hell did I marry a nagging bee and remained married to her? There is a good answer to that question. Alexander, our child. Today I must agree that a more wimpy man had immediately run away from such relation, but my responsibility as father of the child made it impossible for me to take that step. However, a bad relation turned even worse. In her younger days Madeline had been a rather good swimmer and won a few district championships, when her swimmer club held a reunion for their old members, she had come home rather drunk from that party at 6 o'clock in the morning. Due to her no-drinking parents, she used to be very careful with booze and I had never seen so tipsy before, at least not after getting Alexander. 
Her explanation about a nightcap at a hotel room together with old friends living out of town was not okay for me, but could have been an innocent truth. Then the shit hit the fan about 10 days later with a phone call from one of the old moles. He told me, I'm in the bar at the Ritz Hotel where a Sebastian Nolberg, best known as The Zero, is loudly bragging to everybody about F your wife Madeline at some old swimmer reunion party recently. I'm coming, I told him. Then I shouted at Madeline. The Zero is at the Ritz bar bragging about F you at the swimmer party. He must been damn good for getting you remain the whole night with him. Madeline got furious and shouted, That's a damn lie. I'm coming there with you for scratching the truth out of that slimy worm. Even Zero was a good swimmer in his younger days. National champion once in the time. But nowadays he is more famous as a local Casanova. Three times divorced and still a successful womanizer usually chasing for married women. Some 10, 20 years his seniors who fell for his low standards and still very well-shaped body. We left the kid at the neighbor's house and went a Ritz at highest possible speed. Though Madeline was frantic about Zero's bragging. I'm sure she even wanted to protect him from my wrath because she had seen what I could do with horny bastards harassing her. It happened once at the golf club Christmas party where I saw the slight boozed local pro held his right hand under Madeline's short skirt at the dance floor and caressed her bottoms and ignored her rather lame attempts to take his hand away away. I went on the dance floor and interrupted it, what he didn't like at all, and threatened to give me an unforgettable lesson. His attempt came a half hour later when I stood at the bar talking with an old acquaintance. The now very aggressive pro came towards me assisted by the greenkeeper, a rather big fellow. To my luck both of them were now rather well boozed and I understood that a surprise attack would be my only chance to avoid a severely beating. When they were close enough I did a rush, and hit the totally unaware big greenkeeper down to the floor with a hard right fist. The surprise pro froze for a second what was enough for me to kick his balls, and when he bowed forward I hit his face with all my power. He fell as a log over the still groggy big fellow with a bleeding nose and the fight was over when we were surrounded by many other guests. 